Yes. Now, three minutes, colleagues. That's all he's for. <laughs> it's working. Sir Charles, thank you for, for calling me. Um, three minutes. Well, wow. thank you very much. So I'm just going to get to the point, if I may. Um, uh, I appreciate the Honourable Lady's comments. Um, I should just say that uh, the RMT doesn't quite agree with her about the London Mayor, uh, I'm afraid. And I'll just... Uh, I would just respectfully, I would just respectfully uh, make that point because the RMT themselves say that it's the London Mayor that's causing the logjam and ultimately that does have a considerable impact on the finances available. And when I'm afraid, um, Sir Charles, you, like me, represent a constituency that has a frequency train service of three hourly and when you see TfL getting such considerable amounts of money, um, that is, of course... It is a matter of great concern for me because that is money going to support the good people of London um, rather than to support the heart of Wessex Line, which I know my honourable friend, the Minister, is very well aware of um, my strong views on that point. But I should like to um, come to the subject matter about the future of rail. So, Charles, I spent 20 years working for the railways before I was elected to Parliament. Um, I'm not sure if there are any members of the other side of the House that used to be a member of the RNT but I should say that I was once a member uh, of, of the RMT. And so um, um, I should give them a big shout out for their policy briefing. It's very, very interesting to, to read and I'm, I'm grateful for it. But the future of the railways, uh, Sir Charles, uh, are very important for the future of this country. And I appreciate there's lots of people that um, have strong views about where the um, new HQ of GB Railways is going to be. Um, from my personal uh, perspective, I don't think it's going to make very much difference at all to the future capability of the railway in the future. What is going to make an enormous difference is where the government looks to invest. The government has supported the railway to the tune of £14 billion during the, the worst time of the pandemic. It has kept thousands of people in jobs and it has done that to ensure the future of our railway can be extremely good and support the future of the country. And I think it's really important that we also consider the wider things that the railways have to change going forward. The railways have been marvellous in lots of ways, but the fact that it can take 12 months to change a timetable is just not acceptable in the current day and age. You know, why is it that we have a timetable that is the same on a Monday as it is on a Friday when we know the demands are very different. There are fundamental changes that in order for our railway to excel do need to change. I'm conscious of the time, um, uh, Sir Charles, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to speak in this debate, but I would just finally like to say that it's really, really important that we remember it's not all about the cities, but it is also about connecting the rural areas as well and areas such as West Dorset and other parts of the country that would greatly benefit from the future.